Today, December 7th, 2020, marks the 79th anniversary of that tragic date, which will live in infamy, as President Franklin Delano Roosevelt famously put it. Today, we'll examine how the attack on Pearl Harbor was precipitated by a communist agent as part of a Soviet plot to neutralize their opponents on a global scale. You're watching Anarchy in America with Christian Gomez. Joining us today to discuss the communist Soviet agent in the U.S. government who precipitated the Pearl Harbor attacks to the benefit of Stalin and the USSR is William F. Jasper, senior editor for the New American Magazine. Thank you for being with us here today, Bill. My pleasure as always, Christian. So in 2013, you wrote an article entitled The Communist Agent Who Caused Pearl Harbor and Global Economic Havoc, in which you identified the communist agent as being Harry Dexter White. Who exactly was he, and how did he manage to penetrate the highest levels of the U.S. government? Well, Harry Dexter White is one of the most important Soviet agents to penetrate our government during the Roosevelt administration. So the New Deal under FDR was really uh, honeycomb permeated with uh, communist agents, the two most prominent Soviet uh, cells being the Silver Master Cell and the Ware Cell led by Harold Ware, the Silver Master Cell led by Nathan Gregory Silver Master. Uh, Harry Dexter White was in the Treasury Department. He was the second in command at the Treasury Assistant Department. Assistant Secretary in, of Treasury, correct? Under uh, Henry Morgenthau, correct. was it? Under Henry Morgenthau. And he actually authored many of the programs that, are, that took Morgenthau's name, the Morgenthau Program for, uh, for Germany. But the most important one, which is the subject of our, our talk today and which I wrote about in 2013, uh, was his authorship of what became known as the Morgenthau Ultimatum, or the Hullmult uh, Ultimatum, to uh, Japan, which really precipitated the Japanese attack on us. And it was important to note that as a Soviet agent, he was doing this precisely to help the Soviet Union. How exactly well, or specifically did uh, Harry Dexter White um, precipitate that Pearl Harbor attack? What role did he play? In the Japanese government at that time, you had the war faction that wanted to go to war against the United States because the Roosevelt administration uh, kept uh, pushing them and with the goading of Harry Dexter White and other communists in our government, in the State Department, Treasury Department. Um, and so the Emperor Hirohito and the Kanoe government wanted to, no, we don't want to go to war with the United States. Uh, but Harry Dexter White, operating under the direction of the Soviet KGB, at that time known as the NKVD, uh, authored a memorandum uh, that was uh, ultimatum that was delivered to the Japanese that basically enraged them. It made so many demands upon them that the war party was able to sweep into power. They decided, okay, we have to attack the United States uh, because uh, they're, they're essentially declaring war on us with all these economic demands. So they chose the Pearl embargoes, Harbor. for example, on uh, on the on, embargoes on, on particularly on oil, uh, all oil uh, and uh, rubber. products, rubber. So uh, why was this important uh, to the Soviet Union, and why did they uh, want to precipitate this? That was my next Stalin, question for you. Yeah, okay. Well, Stalin uh, did not want the Japanese to attack him. They had been traditional enemies of Japan, had, had been to war with them uh, a number of times, and Japan uh, could have and, and would have attacked uh, Russia if we had not intervened. Uh, the Soviets obviously didn't want that. Uh, moreover, they wanted to be able to have uh, the United States uh, ally with them uh, so that they could then promote uh, uh, communism in China and throughout all of Asia. And that really was the outcome of it. Harry Dexter White uh, was operating in this vast network of, of communist agents throughout all of Asia through the Institute of Pacific Relations, 
But also the Soviets had uh, Richard Sorge, their spy in Tokyo, and he was he had his own agents working in the Japanese government who worked with the communist agents that uh, that Harry Dexter White was working with. And we know all of this uh, now for a, for a fact. Back at the time of uh, in the 1940s. Harry Dexter White was defended by many, as was Alger Hiss, as uh, being, no, he was just a liberal, he's just, uh, he, he's not a Soviet agent. The evidence was very strong, going clear back uh, to many of the defectors, Whitaker Chambers, Elizabeth Bentley, and others who identified Alger Hiss, Harry Dexter White, and other top members of the Roosevelt cabinet and administration as being Soviet agents. These were people who had been Soviet agents with them, and they identified them. All of the, the mass media here in the United States, particularly those connected with the Council on Foreign Relations, uh, completely dismissed all of those and attacked all of the people that were trying to expose it. Elizabeth Bentley, Whitaker Chambers, uh, Joseph McCarthy, uh, Senator McCarran, Robert Welch, all of the people who were trying to expose uh, this communist uh, takeover of our government and manipulation of our government uh, were attacked and smeared, and all of the uh, uh, perpetrators were exonerated. It's very interesting that uh, the purpose, one of the things that brought about my article was a, an, a book by Ben Steele, who, was, who is a senior... Uh, fellow at the Council on Foreign Relations, after denying for decades that Harry Dexter White was a, a Soviet agent, now they admit it because it's it's uh, palatable now. They can get away with doing that, and it kind of absolves them. Then they think of all of the decades of disinformation and misinformation and smearing of those who had heroically tried to expose this. It's interesting that you should mention that the Soviet Union wanted the U.S. to be their ally, because when you look at the history of Japan, there was a Sino-Russo war in which Japan defeated the Russian Navy in the late 19th century, and really uh, that brought Japan on the global stage as a modern, mechanized, industrialized world and naval power. Do you think that the Soviet Union, in, pre in, in precipitating this attack through their communist uh, uh, agents in the U.S., that they were hoping for Japan to devastate the U.S. fleet and perhaps the U.S. to retaliate, as they did, and devastate the Japanese fleet. So then the Soviet Union and their navy, uh, at the end of the war, could come out as a more dominant naval power with their forces being relatively intact and unscathed by the Pacific uh, naval conflict? Precisely. That is exactly what they intended and more. Uh, and who gained from all of this? Obviously, the Soviet Union did. In addition to uh, what you just mentioned about the devastation of the Japanese and military and U.S. military uh, expenditures in in this effort, uh, we see that uh, at the end of the war, Harry, or before the end of the war, Harry Dexter White stopped the transfer of me $500 million that the U.S. Congress had voted for Chiang Kai-shek, the free Chinese anti-communist uh, leader of China, who had carried the brunt of the fight uh, against the Japanese. Uh, so the U.S. Congress voted to send this money to uh, Chiang Kai-shek. Single-handedly, virtually, Harry Dexter White canceled that by wow. getting Morgan thought. So not only did he precipitate Pearl Harbor, um but he also helped uh, Mao Zedong come to power by withdrawing the needed and critical financial aid to Chiang Kai-shek's nationalist forces. So we can thank Harry Dexter White for Red China as well. Now, after the war, uh, Harry Dexter White, he set up uh, sort of the modern economic world order we see today. Can you tell us a little bit about that? And then on top of that, how that relates to perhaps today and, 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 and others who may be following in Harry Dexter White's footsteps on the... Uh, in the global economic order? Very good question. Uh, at the end of the war, uh, to, to, uh, the final uh, days of the war, we had what is known as the Bretton Woods Conference. And at that conference, Harry Dexter White was the leading light. He was a world famous economist 
Uh, he was, as you pointed out, second in command of the U.S. Treasury Department. He really was the, the brains behind Hans Morgenthau, the Secretary of the Treasury. And at the Bretton Woods Conference, he and Lord John Maynard Keynes, the Fabian socialist economist who uh, worked with him there, set up the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank, two of the UN institutions, financial institutions that are still with us today and that are still wreaking economic havoc around the world. So that system is really part of, if you go to the Communist Manifesto, the 10 planks of the Communist Manifesto, one of them is centralizing credit in the hands of the state. So all of the central banks, that the whole central banking system that has been set up in the 20th century uh, is really in conformity with that communist ideal of centralizing credit in the hands of the state. And so if you have a global state, you need to centralize that in the hands of the global state. So the International Monetary Fund, in my book, Global Tyranny Step by Step, which uh, came out a couple decades ago, we go into the history of that and who all of the key people were, not only at the Bretton Woods Conference, but at the San Francisco Conference of the founding of the UN, where again, we see Harry Dexter White's colleague, Alger Hiss, was chairman of that conference and one of the key people writing the charter of the United Nations. So you have the United Nations, the International Monetary Fund, World Bank, all coming together at the same time with, in critical positions of power, uh, the communists who not only played the key roles, but appointed most of the people who would attend the charter, the founding of the United Nations and the founding of the IMF World Bank. So, uh, then you asked about today. How does that yes. relate to today? Yeah, how does that relate to today? Who's well, following in, in their Harry Dexter White's footsteps today? Any so, other communist agents? Very, very definitely. So now we have just last month in October, uh, Kristalina Georgieva, the uh, Soviet uh, agent who's now running the IMF. She's the executive director of the IMF, came out with a call for a new Bretton Woods. Now, she's not alone in, in calling for that. For the last uh, decade, we've done a number of stories on Bretton Woods II, which is a program which has been pushed by the Council on Foreign Relations and all the globalists. Now she has just brought it out as a new program, she says, which we need because of the uh, COVID-1984 uh, pandemic, which all of the globalists are using. They say we need to reset the whole world economy. We need to put in, as she said, uh, new digital digital currencies with the, all of the global central banks. And of course, most of the central banks have already come out in favor of that. And so uh, in, in uh, joint with that, she said, uh, because of the climate crisis, so we have the global warming, the pandemic, and economic chaos. So now we have to have a number, another uh, Bretton Woods, which will give more power to the central bankers and particularly to the IMF, World Bank, and United Nations. Well, thank you so much for sharing all this critical information, Mr. Jasper. And of course, we direct all those that are watching to find your articles on the newamerican.com as well. Thank you so much again for your time. Thank you, Kristen. William F. Jasper's article, The Communist Agent Who Caused Pearl Harbor and Global Economic Havoc, is available for free on thenewamerican.com. And as Jasper mentioned, we also recommend the book Global Tyranny, Step by Step, The United Nations and the Emerging New World Order, which you can purchase as a digital download from ShopJBS. And as always, be sure to check us out at jbs.org. Until next week, take care and God bless.